So in this video we're going to look at regression analysis which is uh, essentially an extension of correlations and we've looked at uh, videos uh, on correlations. So in a correlation you might want to um, see which of your training variables, so you train them to jump high or, or improve their reactive strength index, uh, their speed, which of these variables best um, uh, or has the greatest effect on their agility score and uh, agility being the variable that the coach identifies as, as very important for, for competition performance. And then you get some justification with regards to the training program you put into place. So if we run those correlations and we look at agility, we can see that standing broad jump has the uh, highest uh, correlation with agility uh, and uh, is, is maybe the, the, the best predictor of it. So uh, your training program should uh, feature exercises uh, that make you better at doing a standing broad jump, for example. Uh, the, the score is 0 0.66, and if we square that, we get the coefficient determination, uh, which explains the variance of uh, the agility score that's accounted for by someone's ability to uh, jump horizontally. So uh, that 0 0.66 squared is about uh, 45%. So... Uh, that leaves 55% still unaccounted for. So what the regression analysis does is, is try to use the other variables that, that we've tested, uh, throw that into the mix and see if we can start to increase the amount of variance that we can explain uh, um, regarding someone's agility score. So currently we're at 45%, but if we throw in their RSI and maybe throw in their 10 meter speed, we climb up to 50% or 55, 60% of the score. And again, we get greater justification for our training interventions and um, the different um, exercises that we use to improve the scores of, of tests that coaches recognize as important to our performance. So uh, let's go and run a regression analysis, which is down here in Analyze Regression, and we're going to run a linear regression analysis. So in a dependent goes, what it is we're trying to predict, and in this example, we're trying to predict someone's agility score. And then down here goes uh, uh, the different tests that we're going to use to, to predict uh, their, their, their score for agility. Now, whatever goes into here must be governed by, uh, by logic. So if you look, for example, we've got this RSA here. Arguably, their uh, repeat, uh, repeat sprint ability, their speed endurance, uh, has no bearing on their, their flat out um, five seconds uh, speed for their change of direction. So it wouldn't be logical to add that into the mix, you'd leave it out. Also, something to consider is that uh, we don't want to refer to as multicollinearity. We don't want two tests that are so highly correlated that essentially they're the same thing. And if we look at our, our correlations here, we haven't really got anything that's really high. But again, you might argue that someone's ability to jump um, and vertically is pretty much so the same as their ability to jump horizontally and the correlation between the two is usually pretty high so you might argue that you're entering the same test twice and it's not really gonna gonna help you out anymore you want to enter uh, uh, different tests but all tests that go in there must still be correlated back to agility so I'm just going to put in there uh, the standing broad jump instead of the counter movement jump because uh, as you can see it has a higher correlation not by much but it is nevertheless a higher correlation. So I'll put standard broad jump in there, uh, RSI in there, which is a, a, a different skill, uh, and 10 meter speed. So here I've got three variables I'm gonna try, uh, I'm gonna use to try and better predict uh, agility than anyone by itself. Um, and with regression, you need uh, at least 10 uh, athletes per variable. So here I've got three variables, I need 30 athletes, and actually I've got 70, so uh, I'm fine with that. And we can use a stepwise uh, method for regression, which means it will take the highest um, uh, correlation uh, between the variables and then look to explain the remaining variance with the, the, the next highest correlated variable. So I press OK. And here we can see I've got my uh, my model. I've got a one variable model, and actually I've got a two variable model, which uh, which is good. So my one variable model is just a standing broad jump, and we've already seen that um, the correlation was 0.66. So let's go above 0.66, uh, 
um, and the R squared is 0.44. But uh, in my two predictor model, I use the standard broad jump and the 10 meter speed, and I increase the R uh, value up to 0.72, and the R squared value now goes up to 52. So now I can uh, explain um, someone's agility score to to uh, a greater uh, uh, level using uh, an additional variable. This ad adjusted R square is what uh, the variance would be explained if you were to apply this model to the population from which the sample was taken. But that's pretty good. So if I um, was to work with any athletes outside of this uh, particular group, then their standing broad jump and their 10 meter speed would predict their agility to. Uh, or 51% of their uh, agility score. So I can start to justify my program and I can uh, justify an inclusion of additional uh, exercises too. So let's have a look at doing the other regression now. And we're gonna do that uh, using their repeat sprint ability. So we take that out, put RSA in. Now in this uh, example, I think that uh, agility logically uh, would have a bearing on RSA. So I'm going to put that on there. So this RSA test, uh, it involved a change of direction. Uh, just repeated over several intervals. So uh, their, their fastest change of direction speed would have some impact on it. So I'm going to put that in there. So now I have uh, one, two, three, four, four models and 40 athletes again. Uh, I can meet that criteria. So press OK. And again, I end up with a two variable model which moves up from 0.688 to 0.724 and the R squared value again goes up. So my two, my uh, my regression analysis has, has enabled a, a great uh, ability to um, uh, predict the score um, by virtue of using additional test variable. So other points to note about if you're using a regression analysis are that the data must be normally distributed and there can be no outliers within the, within the score as well.